Don't get used to this. The agency rarely does ride-alongs for non-personnel. We have nothing to hide. We're in clearly marked invisible vehicles, and we announce our presence. Okay, on my way. Adam 8 10, 1035 Mary. Yes. We also have dashboard cameras and body cameras. But our most effective methods are glyphs that compel people to tell the truth when under the influence of them. It has made trials far more expedient, thankfully. We do not have to worry about perjury or false witness when we can put an amulet around their neck and they have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I would argue it is far more humane than how it was done before. The accused does not have to spend weeks in prison. The jury does not have to sequester themselves for extended periods. And it has brought the wrongful arrest and incarceration rates down to almost zero. I admit it is not foolproof. There are some people that have found a way to resist the compulsion, but those are quite rare. That is why the jury observes the proceedings. The judge does not solely take testimony under a glyph and make a decision. Both sides are heard, and evidence is presented as in a traditional courtroom. And again, aside from a few strange events, Magic seems to hold everyone equally accountable. It does not bend to politics or greed, like some might. Yes, that is my perspective on it. Then again, I am slightly biased. If it weren't for Magic, I wouldn't be here with you. Living as a constructed android is challenging sometimes, but I do find it quite rewarding. Even if a lot of my colleagues see me as a glorified bomb disposal robot. No, no, no. We will not be doing anything like that. This is just a routine patrol driving around the city, and keeping an eye out. Mostly looking for dealers of magical items. A lot of them are complete frauds, but every now and again someone will get a hold of something dangerous, and we have to intervene. Yes, a couple of weeks ago we had to arrest someone that was trying to sell a walking stick that turned into some sort of snake to one of our undercover officers. When we confiscated the rest of his goods, we found a lot of other things. One was a real magic wand, like in the stories, but it shot out flames the size of basketballs. Another was a knife with a glass blade, which got handed over to R&D immediately. And a cloak that just... It smoked. It wasn't on fire. It wasn't even warm. But every time it moved, it would just let out little tufts of smoke. That one was pretty harmless, to be fair. But unauthorized possession and sale of magical items is still an offense that needs to be taken seriously. Other than that, just a few small trinkets. Some jewelry that was enchanted, a few baubles. But I will tell you this. The strangest thing was an apple. Yes, like you would eat. But the outside of it was pure white. Like someone had cut it out of paper, exactly. 
It was cold to the touch. And even with all of my skills identifying magical items, I could not get a proper read on it. I heard when R&D cut into it and the flesh inside was completely black. Not like rot, but like ink. When we questioned the man, he told us that he got these from a cult of vampires in an underground cathedral at the end of the subway line. Obviously he was lying, but he had to have gotten them from somewhere. So we are investigating all possible means. No. Believe it or not, the glyphs of truth are kept very secure, and we do not just carry them around with us. It is not like we have an infinite supply, and if one were to get lost, stolen, or broken, that department would be in some serious trouble. It is better to have them where they are, and only used when necessary. Negative. Hold on. Something's coming through on the radio. 77 Edward Victor, King 854. Yes, this is Quick Case. Go ahead. Place negative 29. Current 2000 Honda, out of Gardena, on 145. 10 dispatch, please repeat. Deal on a Brian Diaz. 10-4 dispatch. I will relay and proceed to the location. Attention all units in the vicinity. We have a 1070 in progress at 5th and Lake Shore Drive. Please proceed with caution. Do not engage without backup. Over and out. What? Oh, 1070 is public pyromancy. Someone is down by the river, hurling giant fireballs around and they need to be dealt with immediately. Thankfully, the bystanders have left the immediate area, but this may be a diversion from something else. No, this is not really uncommon for us. A document has been making the rounds on the internet called the Anarchist's Spellbook. And unfortunately, that information is being abused by those who do not take it seriously. We had to arrest someone a few days ago for animating all the bushes in the park in an attempt to raise an army for themselves. N no, they were bushes. We kicked them over and put him in handcuffs. Once he was off the scene, they all just reverted to being bushes again. City maintenance was not thrilled with us. They had to re-landscape three blocks of green space, but we acted as quickly as we could have. Some magic works quickly, and we are not even notified until there are already a dozen shrubberies milling around. Alright. We are here. No. You need to stay in the vehicle. It is not safe, and you are not part of the agency. I cannot allow you to put yourself in danger. I said no. You can't just... Listen, hey.
I am sorry, but you did not give me an alternative. You cannot be trusted to stay inside the vehicle and out of harm's way. Once the pyromancer is dealt with, I will come back and uncuff you from the dashboard. And I will return you to the agency headquarters to conclude this ride along. Edward Victor King 854. 